Why does it seem like every YouTuber is launching their own brand? Well, it might be because they are. But the real question is, are their products any good, or is this just the latest YouTuber cash grab trend? To answer that question, I maxed out my credit card buying all the products that I not only didn't need, but I didn't want. And in this video, we're going to answer the question of how they're all able to start a brand, if their products are actually any good, and why every YouTuber is starting a brand. I was inspired to make this video when Pokimane set the world on fire when she launched Mina Snacks, an innovative new snack food brand which sells cookies Ooh. for $28. Aww. In her defense, you do get four bags of cookies for $28, but in Sanity's defense, you can buy Chips Ahoy for $4 at the grocery store and you don't have to pay to ship them to your house. But Pokey is not alone in starting a brand, she's just one of the latest people to make the move and joins the likes of Logan Paul. KSI, and the YouTube messiah, Mr. Beast. Now there's a ton of these YouTubers started brands, but Feastables by Mr. Beast has to be the most notable. Maybe it's the most notable because it's Mr. Beast, he's the largest creator on the platform and he features it in nearly every video of his, but it also might be because there's a horde of people who glaze him, hoping any singular mention of his name will revive their failing career. Feastables. No, Did that was different, okay, that hold on. So there's an absolute ton of YouTuber products out there, and I tried to get as many different ones as I could, but inevitably I couldn't get them all because the way my bank account works, uh, there's not really money in, in there. So with that in mind, let's see what I ordered. Pokimane's Minus Snacks has only one product available right now, the Midnight Mini Cookie. I couldn't really tell what their value offering was, and then I looked at their website and I realized they don't really know either. One of the highlights is this little part that says, source of vitamin D. I think that's a pretty empty statement to make, like is it a good source? I'm gonna be honest, I don't know a whole lot about vitamins. I don't know what unit you measure vitamin D in. How much of me is vitamin D? But I like that they're humble enough to not say they're a good source, but they are a source. Also on the webpage, they compare themselves to Leading Cookies, which is actually my favorite brand. They also have this lovely section that says, Real Ingredients, Unreal Taste. Whatever that means. You know how like the other guys have those fake ingredients. Not us though. We have vitamin D. Actually, you can tell if you zoom in on the back on the webpage that it says it's a good source of vitamin D. So, not sure which is which. Anyways, I decided to join the Minus Snack Club and save 10% on my order, so my $28 cookies only cost me $25, plus shipping, so I actually paid over $30, but... Jeff's Barbershop is a brand launched by Jeff Wittick, and it's themed about his show, Jeff's Barbershop. The show is kind of creatively very similar to the Eric Andre show where there's a lot of like random stuff happening. But something that's pretty cool is that Jeff used to cut hair before becoming a YouTuber. So he actually cuts hair on the show. So I thought it was pretty cool when I saw he launched Jeff's Barbershop hair care products because it felt like a really creative and unique fit. However, I became a little less excited when I saw he's charging $25 for deodorant. There isn't even a club to join where I can save 10%. But I actually bought this during Black Friday, so there's a bundle deal for $90, which came with pomade, hair texture spray, deodorant, this travel bag, and a comb. So two products down, and I haven't even gotten close to getting a half-decent deal. At least I didn't have to pay for shipping. Oh, please don't make me talk about this. I don't know how you wouldn't know about these by now, but if you somehow don't know, Mr. Beast has a snack brand called Feastables, and KSI and Logan Paul have an energy slash hydration drink company called Prime. Videos about these products have been beaten to death on YouTube, even by yours truly. But they're relatively cheap and also like available at the Walmart near my house, so I just bought them anyways. So I didn't have to pay for shipping, and I wasn't swindled, so kind of back on track. Now, Emma Chamberlain has Chamberlain Coffee, and admittedly, I don't really know much about her. Wikipedia says she's known for her penchant with coffee, uh, so I googled what penchant meant, and then I realized, oh, that sounds like a pretty good fit for her audience. She also launched this brand at the end of 2019, so she's kind of like one of the OG YouTuber product people. Unfortunately, I do not have a penchant with coffee, so I decided to buy some tea. I don't drink a lot of tea anyways, so I don't know what a good deal is, but I paid about $12 for 20 bags of tea, 
which I thought was kind of a good deal. But it wasn't until like way later I looked back and realized Amazon Basics charges $2 for the same amount of tea. And I get you don't have the buying power of Amazon, but I just don't feel like it costs you six times more to make the same thing. The thing is, I want to be mad about this and I just can't genuinely get mad. Like I felt so genuinely ripped off by Jeff's Barbershop and by Minus Snacks that this feels normal. Hot Wings is a popular internet show where celebrities eat increasingly spicy wings, so it made a lot of sense when they came out with their own brands of hot sauces. I recently released a video where I actually ate these sauces with my friend, and I felt like I'd include it inside this video as well because it is a YouTuber product. And if you're still a little on the fence of if it's actually considered a YouTube product or not, I just want to remind you that I paid $120 for 10 bottles of hot sauce, so it definitely has the price tag of a YouTuber product. Airrack is another creator who I know nothing about. It looks like he does like Mr. Beast style videos and they kind of relate to pizza. Now the pizza fi sauce claims that it turns anything into pizza. I think that's a lie. I think it just turns it into anything that now has pizza sauce on it. So we'll see. I really like the line on the website that says pizza fi turns anything into pizza. Don't believe us? Just try it. Our planes don't crash. Don't believe us? Just fly in one. If I don't believe you, why am I going to give you my money? Well, I'm going to do it because I'm making a stupid little YouTube video right now, but other people will probably be more hesitant, especially because it's $25 for two bottles. Fortunately, I had looked on Amazon and found a reseller who sold me one bottle for only $15. So I got a pretty good deal. I actually didn't realize I had bought it from a reseller at the time. I only realized when I was going back to see how much I paid. And this is sold by a candy company. Like they sell nothing related to pizza. They also made their own graphics. And you can tell that by the fact there are some pretty bad photoshops. But there's also my favorite thing, which is this slide that says, turn anything into pizza. You know, the slogan that we've heard 45 times. But what makes this one great is not the poorly photoshopped bottle, but the fact that the ingredients next to it are just, the, it's just the stuff you use to make pizza. Um, yeah, this sauce is pretty good. It can turn dough, cheese, and tomato sauce into pizza. I hope it can. That's a pretty hard one to mess up. The final product I bought was from Binging with Babish. Surprisingly, this is a YouTuber who I do know, and I love Binging with Babish. If you don't know, he makes these videos that take recipes from video games or from movies and TV shows, and then he recreates them in real life. It's really therapeutic to watch. It actually has taught me a decent little bit about how to cook. Now he launched a cookware brand, which is super like, it's just like the perfect thing. And he describes his brand as a high quality line of products with a price point palatable for everyday chefs. So it's made for the people who wanna invest just a little bit more into their cooking equipment, but they don't wanna go to that next above and beyond. Now the knife only costs $24, which is a pretty decent price it looks like. It also has an average 4.8 star review across like 8,000 reviews. So I don't know. I'm not trying to get my hopes up, but I might get my hopes up. All right. Well, that's all the products. <sighs> no, it's not. I've been making this video for four months and editing it for the past two and a half weeks. And then the day I go to finish it, Ryan Trahan puts out this little number. So I'm, I'm just going to do a voiceover. Okay, so here's the deal. Ryan Trahan just announced his brand Joyride, which is a health food take on candy. It's $25 for four bags, which seems like a lot to me. And despite the way they're making it seem, this is not a brand new brand. Joyride's been around for a little bit. It was started by this guy and it used to be something called Project 7, but it appears they've rebranded pretty recently and now it's called Joyride. And by the looks of it, it's always been kind of expensive. It doesn't look like they really shifted the price up that much. Okay, back to the video. So while we wait for those to ship, let's talk about how they're actually able to start all these brands. All right, time to put my $60,000 business degree to use. So there's really two ways you can make a product. You can design something from scratch and then find a manufacturer to like make it for you and then you sell it. Or you can find a manufacturer first who specializes in making a product and then make some modifications to it with them. The first option gives you more creative control and you probably need to do it if you're doing something super unique. The drawback is it's significantly more expensive to do this. The other option, which is used by a lot of businesses, is called private labeling or white labeling. 
if you do this, you're really just in charge of marketing and distribution of the product. And honestly, for most creators, I'd rather them do this. If you look at someone like Emma Chamberlain and her coffee brand, she's not down in Colombia picking coffee beans. No, she probably just went to a brand that already knows where to get coffee beans and said, hey, I want to make my own brand. Somebody says, hey, you should expand into tea. Boom, now you have tea. And it's, I think it's overpriced. I'm not sure. And I can't really convey how normal this process is. Like there's still people I see hating on Pokemon on Twitter because she doesn't make her own cookies. This isn't Bella Delphine bathwater, okay? She's not in the kitchen between streams making up a batch for you. But you might have noticed that there's one product in particular that a lot of people are launching. Coffee beans. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Creators want money. I know. Some people are just greedy as hell, but some people are just making really cool creative things and really cool creative things aren't always financially profitable. Now, in the past, creators have really relied on two things to make money, ads and merch sales. Ad revenue fluctuates by the time of year and merch sales are kind of weird because people tend to only buy a shirt once, but someone who buys coffee is gonna buy coffee and drink it every day. And then eventually their coffee is gonna run out. So they're gonna buy more coffee and then it's gonna run out and then they're gonna buy more coffee. And now all of a sudden you have repeat reliable income. And you might think, yeah, there's just a pretty big barrier to entry though. So they're not gonna put in all this work and all this money and just release a pretty bad product. Well, that's where you're wrong. Cause I launched my own coffee brand for $3 and it took me about two hours. In the case of Minus Snacks, it's a private label from a brand called Creations Foods. And we know this because Pokey said it. But why does Pokey get so much hate if private labels are common practice? Well, one, most people don't know how business works. And two, did you see how much I spent on those cookies? It's no surprise that a bunch of products by creators are shockingly overpriced. But usually, you never find out how overpriced they are. I don't know how much it costs to make deodorant, Jeff, but I can tell you it's not $25. The problem with Pokimane's brand is that we kind of already know how much it costs to make her cookies because the brand she partnered with used to sell them under a different brand name. The brand was called Totsi and they've tried to pretty much scrub it from the internet so you really can't find much out there about it. Oh wait, it's back. So this user noticed that Pokey's cookie appeared to just be a rebrand of a cookie that was selling at Costco for only $10. And that was $10 for 14 ounces, whereas Pokemon's cookie is $28 for 16 ounces. I may have gotten a D in math, but that seems like a pretty bad deal to me. Now that means the original cost 71 cents per ounce, whereas Pokemon's costs $1.75 per ounce. A minuscule increase of only 245%. Now Pokemon did address this. She said, yeah, we're working with that company, but that was just a test batch they had done before and we modified the recipe. And she actually makes a lot of claims and we're gonna fact check those a little bit here. First, she claims the ingredient quality is better, which to me is a bit of a nothing statement. The new ingredients list is nearly identical to the one from before. And Creations Food was already advertising that they use the highest quality ingredients. I'm not a food scientist, but I just feel like if you adjusted the ratios, then you'd probably have to adjust the nutrition facts, which you didn't, so. She also claims that the size of the cookie is different, which doesn't matter because we're measuring by weight. And by weight, your price is astronomically more. She also claims that you change suppliers, and I can't tell you about how much it costs to change suppliers, but it probably didn't cost two and a half times more. One thing she is correct about, which we've mentioned, is that they did add vitamin D. How much is vitamin D worth? Well, each bag is a total of 12 MCG. For context, for $6, you can get these supplements, which have 4,500 MCG of vitamin D, meaning that if you divided that amongst every bag, the value she's adding is about two cents. And that's not addressing the fact that they're probably buying vitamin D in bulk, which means they get an even better price. And keep in mind, even if the price was 100 times more expensive, it would only be $1.60 added. At the end of the day, I know healthy foods are more expensive, and I don't doubt that she put a ton of work into making this brand. But if she doesn't think that these cookies are wildly overpriced, then she's either A, full of shit, or B, wildly out of touch with the actual value of money. And I think that might be the case. Pokimane doesn't seem like a greedy or manipulative person. And she's found a ton of success in the past few years. And with that comes a lot of money. On top of that, she lives in Los Angeles, where things are just naturally more expensive. If I was to take a guess, 
$7 to her sounded like a fair price at the time. But when she got pushback from broke boys like me, Oh my god, $28 for cookies? It's four bags. Like if you're a broke boy, just say so. What is she supposed to do? You can't really lower the price because it looks like you're admitting guilt. The only real option is to keep the price the same and try to increase the value by adding something more. And it actually appears that's exactly what she's doing because right now there's a special offer going on and there's been special offers the entire few months since they've launched. Well, that's all I had to rant about. Um, I hope those cookies get here soon. Oh, they're here. So it took a while for everything to come in, but it's all here. We're gonna start with the reason probably anyone's here. These minus snacks. Wait, what? Okay, I know it doesn't matter, but three of my bags are blue and one's white. I'm really glad these actually finally came in because uh, it's been really gloomy the past few days and I could really use some vitamin D. Maybe I'm looking too deep into this. I just don't get why this one's white and this is blue. All right. I can't even see this. Look how small this is. Didn't she brag about the cookie being bigger? Okay, well, uh, despite the previous part of the video, um, this isn't just a hate on Pokemane because she made a snack brand. So credit where credit is due, these taste good. It tastes like the outer cookie, like not the cream, but the outer cookie of an Oreo. So like, will I eat all of these? Probably, yeah. But I paid $30 for this. And I, I just can't justify spending that on cookies. I actually wanna see if these are any different or if it's just a different bag. Yeah, it's, it's just a different bag. So I was gonna have the Prime next, but I guess these aren't selling too well because the top of the cap is so dusty. All right, Prime. Prime got into like a little bit of a drama a few months back because of their caffeine content but I'm a frequent flyer with the Panera Charged Lemonade, so this should be a breeze. I don't know why I did all that. I, I've made a video of me trying Prime before. You would have done it too. It's a solid drink. All right, I'm gonna get all these snack foods out of the way, so we're gonna do the Mr. Beast cookies. They're far bigger than the Minus Snacks one, and the Minus Snacks ones are only four ounces versus the Mr. Beast ones are six and they're plant-based and they're gluten-free, but do they have vitamin D? I mean, objectively, this is just a better cookie. I'm gonna try these Carl gummies out of curiosity. It tastes like any like artificial green apple flavor you've ever had. I'll give credit where credit's due with the Feastable products. They're pretty good. Like they're not trying to be healthy. They're just trying to cut down all the additives, or at least that's what they say. Like, I don't think you make a chocolate bar and advertise that it only has four ingredients if you're not trying to compete on the fact that you only have four ingredients. And so like, this is big on, oh, we don't have a lot of sugar. Chocolate bar. We've already made a video on this before. I just wanted more views. It's fine. It's a chocolate bar. All right, so next up is binging with Babish. I'm out of pocket for the expenses in this video, so I decided to not buy the entire thing. But I did buy one of these kitchen knives because I needed a new kitchen knife. That scared my cat. Here it is, nice little packaging. I bought it on Black Friday, so I got actually a really good deal on it, but it already was like 20 bucks for the knife, which for what I assume is like a nice knife, that's not a bad deal. Am I gonna get like demonetized for this? I don't, I don't know how to review knives. It says German steel, which I have to assume is good steel. I think really what we want to know is does it cut well? So, uh, I got an onion. I should specify that this is a cleft knife, uh, and I don't know what that is. But out of the box, unsharpened, I mean, oh. Wait, we gotta do the paper test first. This one's a little thin, but, oh. Wait, I don't even do it like that, but. All right, just, I'm gonna do such little pressure. Okay, well you need a little bit of pressure. I think that's just how a knife works. Oh, this thing's crazy. All right, if there's a weird cut, it's because my camera commits tax evasion. I mean, this thing cuts really well. I don't know, I mean, in this case it didn't, but I think that's a user problem. I'm just gonna put this out of view so this video still gets recommended to people but i think quality wise it's a really good product it makes sense that he sells it 
because it's a kitchen knife from a guy who cooks. All right, so next up is the Arak Pizza Fi sauce. The boss of all sauce. But its whole thing is like, it turns anything into pizza. I assume you're supposed to shake this. All right, that should be enough shake. So I'd argue an onion is a thing that I guess could be pizza-fied. So uh, first bite, definitely not pizza. Yeah, I'd say like zero out of 10, not pizza. Now we'll just put a little bit of pizza fi sauce on it. I guess a healthy amount. It just tastes like, kind of like a, uh, it's just a pizza sauce. <laughs> Does it taste good? I mean, it, it tastes like pizza sauce. It, it's probably really good on bread and paired with cheese. What if, what if I just, yeah, if you have it straight up, it just tastes like pizza sauce. All right, so I guess now we're gonna check out the Jeff's Barbershop line of products. So you get this little travel bag, which, you know, it doesn't feel bad. It really just is like a fake leather bag though, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart in my hands. So credit where credit's due, right? So you also get this clay pomade, uh, this deodorant, and what is this one? A texture spray. And the whole reason I bought this bundle, the comb. Out the gates, real solid comb, I'm a big fan. All right, not kidding, actually just a solid comb. It's not like light plastic, feels a little durable. I like it. Deodorant is actually pretty helpful. I, I'm a little stinky. I like the packaging for what it's worth. What is it? Oh, okay. I see how this works. Oh, is it a, oh, okay, okay. I don't know, it's, it's fine. It smells like deodorant. Um, I don't know how the distribution of the cost was here. It's a fine deodorant. I will say it, like the packaging and everything feels high quality. All right, let's take a look at the pomade. Again, just solid packaging. What I'll do is I'll use this pomade and this texturing spray on different days for like the next week or so and just see how I like it. I use pomade normally when I feel like putting it in my hair. It's not in my hair today. And I've used the texture spray stuff before. Oh, that's not what I wanted. My only downside with the Jeff's Barbershop line is just how expensive it was. I really like the brand Sunbum and they're not really a cheap company as is, but like Jeff's blew them out of the water cost wise. All right, so I got a cup of hot water for Chamberlain coffee. I don't like coffee, so I didn't want to buy that and just waste it and then give a bad review because I don't like coffee. And I don't really love tea either, but I like tea, so it felt like it made more sense. With that bruise, I'll unveil the last creator product we have, which is uh, the Hot Ones Hot Sauces. Oh, this is kind of cool. This is dope. I won't be trying these in this video. I did a whole thing with my friend Noah having these hot sauces, so go check that out. All right, well, the tea is all brewed. It's tea. So I've actually had these products for a little bit of time now, so I wanted to give them a proper review. The product I was most critical of was Pokemane's Cookies, and I genuinely enjoy them. Their only drawback is their price. They're just not worth anywhere near $7 a bag. If these were like $3 or $4 at the grocery store, I would totally buy them. But for $7 and I have to pay for shipping, absolutely not. The product that let me down the most was Jeff's Barbershop. There's really nothing wrong with them. I think the product itself is fine, but they're so overpriced, I wanted to be blown away. But there's nothing there to blow you away. It's just super generic. But when you're paying $25 for pomade, you kind of want something that's not just plain. I really like this like hair gel stuff that Sunbum makes and it smells like coconut and it's lovely and it's like half the cost. But the Jeff's Barbershop comb, I love. So all these products I had to ship to my house in the US and I picked them up when I was home for the holidays. The comb is the only thing that came back to France with me. I don't, I don't know why, but the comb is just sick. I've been looking for a comb like that for a good amount of time because I had one that broke and I know you don't care, but just like it matters to me. Was $90 for all that worth it? No. But if it was $90 for that comb and I got a bunch of freebies with it, then that was a pretty good deal. The Chamberlain coffee, I'm kind of afraid to make any comment on. Admittedly, I have no penchant for coffee, nor really tea. 
I couldn't tell you if there's anything wrong with it. I think it was fine. It, it might have been a little expensive. I probably shouldn't have bought the Chamberlain coffee, but I was trying to be diverse, okay? You live and you learn. The Pizza Fi sauce is just marinara sauce that's overpriced and put in a squirt bottle. Just go buy ragu instead. You can get like two jars of ragu for like $3. The knife from Babish was actually really quality and I only got to use it a few times and I couldn't bring it back because bringing an eight inch blade on an airplane uh, is a felony. I talked about the hot one sauces in that video, so I'm gonna kind of keep it brief on those, but they were good. They're really spicy. <laughs> it's the only product on this list that made me cry, I guess. But some of them were actually really tasty. So out of all of these products, the only things that felt like blatant cash grabs to me was the pizza fi sauce and the barbershop stuff. Well, everything seemed overpriced except for the Babish knife. These seemed like they went above and beyond and didn't come close to delivering on it. Like Pokemane's cookies are overpriced, but at least it's a good product. <laughs> and it has vitamin D. But being realistic, if you're buying any of these products, you're gonna pay a little bit extra because you're supporting that creator. That's the whole purpose of these brands, to support creators. If you want the best price or the best quality, you're probably not shopping at these brands. But if you want a pretty good product and you wanna support somebody who makes videos that you like, this is a really good way to do it. And if you wanna support me, don't buy my coffee, I shut that site down. But what you can do is watch some of my other videos and subscribe to see some of my future videos. You can also follow me on Twitter where I rant about sports or on Instagram where I post twice a year and my mom likes both of them. All right, well, I'm just gonna sit here now and let YouTube recommend you a video, so. Ooh, that's a good one.